Hey, good morning. This is Mayor Vilensky with Driving Markets. Uh, welcome. Um, as, as per usual, I'll give the warning that anything said on this piece is an opinion, and any opinion, therefore, has uh, very little substance. If you make money, great. If you lose money, it's an opinion. Anyhow, let's get going. All right, so yesterday, intraday, the Dow reached an absolute super high of 36,924 and came off during the day and closed up at 36,799, which is a huge jump. So what's driving the Dow and what sent the Nasdaq down? So what's driving the Dow yesterday is that 27 companies out of the 30 reporting, they pay dividends. A dividend is an amount of money paid once or twice a year by the company to those who hold the shares. Even if you're trading CFDs, if you are holding the CFD as a long, not a short, then you will get the dividend payment or you should get the dividend payment. If you don't, then contact me. If you're short of the stock at the time that the dividend is paid out, then you will end up having money deducted from your balance simply because they have to pay the dividend out and therefore you're short, you will end up having to pay out money. Um, interesting, dividends, most people are not looking at dividend paying stocks. Uh, the reason why they're not looking at dividend paying stocks is because the whole world has gone crazy for the massive growth stocks over the last 13 years. However, the dividend paying stocks pay regular dividends every six months and every year. And that is something that gives you regular income, like clockwork, into your bank account. But most people, I don't know what percentage it is, but let's say most people have gone for the growth stocks and they deem to have made huge amounts of money on the growth of those stocks as opposed to the dividends. However, that could change going forward. Remember, my opinion is that inflation is going to continue going up. As a result, interest rates are going to continue going up and the growth stocks, which depend totally on speculation and have got lots of them have little substance to them, will be hammered. So that's something to be aware of and you may want to move some of your portfolio to the dividend paying stocks for long term growth. Take the Nasdaq, for example, only 50% or less than 50% of the Nasdaq pay dividends. In other words, there's 50% of the companies that are either not making profit or not making enough profit to pay out to their shareholders. So the Nasdaq is a purely growth index, very speculative. And when the correction comes, and it will come, mark my words, it will come, then Nasdaq will be hammered. I am very nervous of those clients who are uh, being long of stock at these levels or long of the markets at these levels because when the correction comes they could end up with significant losses and it could take some time for those losses to retract and for them to make them back up again so uh, just be aware of that be careful and um, the next thing i want to talk about today is crypto okay so you've got bitcoin hovering around the 46,000 level the 50,000 level 51,000 level and it looks like it's consolidating, ready for a major move. Remember, Bitcoin is the flagship of the crypto world. There's only 21 million coins maximum could be mined as far as Bitcoin is concerned. Um, obviously, if the market takes a downturn, then initially, in my opinion, Bitcoin and the speculative cryptos would come off significantly, but Bitcoin would come down following the market and then probably catch up and pick up again. Um, very, very interesting on the cryptos because what you have to look at is you've got to look at the potential, and there's thousands of them, of which crypto will move. 99% of them are speculation. Uh, Bitcoin is a bit more solid, not because it's got great economic foundations, it's because there's a limited number of coins, which is only 21 million, and therefore they're becoming more and more rare. So it could be something to hold long term. In my opinion, on a wild shot, I reckon Bitcoin will reach 100,000 this year, and in the next three years, probably 250,000. Um, I could be wrong, could completely crash, and there could be regulation come out, and the central banks could limit it, but um, it's something to look at and maybe get interested. What's also a interesting observation 
is that all those people I mentioned before that don't get involved in any type of speculation, suddenly these people who are square grey and have got no personality, they are suddenly buying into cryptos. Why would they buy into crypto and not buy into a solid asset or solid share? Um, several reasons. One, they've answered me that um, they can make 7% a day, but you can also lose 7% a day. So what's the greatness of that? They're only looking at what they can make. And second of all, their fear of missing out. They've already told me that they missed out on Bitcoin when it was 20, in 2020, March 2020, was ringing at 3,500, 4,000, 5,000. They watched it, they missed out, but now they're paying 42,000 for it and they're happy with that. So, unusual, unusual personalities, unusual trading style, but uh, it looks like Bitcoin, uh, crypto and Bitcoin has grabbed the attention of absolutely everyone. So where do we go from here? Probably, I would suggest that the DAO, the US markets and overall European markets will probably continue climbing over the next week, two weeks. The big litmus test is going to be in two weeks time as to profit taking and maybe people readjusting their portfolios and I do expect a significant downturn at some stage in the next month or two and be prepared for it, be aware of it. Um, it will happen at least minimum, in my opinion, a 10% to 15% drop in short term. And um, I, again, believe that by the end of the year, you're probably going to have a negative on the year here and running it anywhere between 25 and 40%, purely based on inflation, purely based on interest rates. I think interest rates are going to go up much faster than people actually suspect or people are prepared for and something you've got to be prepared for, something you've got to be ready for and ready to take action. So you can contact me on LinkedIn, on WhatsApp, you can subscribe to this YouTube. Uh, hopefully it's interesting and, and hopefully that's providing you some information. And uh, this is May Valinsky with Driving Markets. Be careful, trade carefully and wish you success.